So I thought I'd do a video just showing you all of the safety and emergency equipment that I keep in my Prius camper. Um, there's actually a lot more here than I realized taking it all out for the video, but most of it actually fits under the two front seats. Um, and I just keep it there because that's just a good place so that it's out of the way, but then also um, easily accessible if I ever need to get to it. So I guess we'll start over here. Um, this is a code reader that I got on Amazon, and I'll put the links for this stuff um, in the description for the video. Um, it reads codes like if there's a code on the dash um, showing that something needs to be checked with the engine or something like that, you can connect this. I use the Dr. Prius app, um, and you can see exactly what it is that needs to be done to the car. Um, and it's just good to know so you can figure out, you know, if it's something that can wait or if it's something that needs to be addressed immediately or something you can take care of yourself. I'm not very mechanically inclined, so um, I don't do a whole lot of the car care myself, um, but it is very useful. And then you can also use the use it with the Dr. Prius app to see how much battery life you have left um, for your hybrid battery. Um, i trying to think what else. You can also turn off the annoying reverse beep, 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 um, which was driving me crazy. So, and I, it was pretty affordable. I wanted to say it was like maybe 30 bucks, um, and then you have to pay for the... The Dr. Prius app too, I believe, um, to get the full version of it. So that's that. I also have this um, car fuse assortment kit. I'm probably going to go through these and get rid of um, the ones that my car won't need or at least, I don't know, get rid of some of this. This is a lot more than I believe I'll ever need. Um, but I needed, I think, a couple of them and so I just bought this because I had all that I needed. Um, next over here, I have a, um, a tire repair kit. I actually do still carry my spare tire for now, um, but I think that's probably going to be the next move that I make. I'll probably be getting rid of my spare tire and using that space um, either for storage or to add a, a second battery. Um, and then I'll probably also move my inverter there as well. But for now, I do still have my spare tire, but then I have this in case, um, in case I need it as well. Here on the back of my um, passenger seat, I keep a flashlight and a headlamp, and I actually have these turned around, um, unless someone is riding in the car with me. And I got these neat little clips. I think they came with this, um, with a cargo net, actually, that I use to keep my um, WeatherTech shades in. Um, next is this. This is probably one of my favorite things here. It's, um, <laughs> it's just an air compressor. But I was for many years using one that the the gauge didn't work. So I would constantly like I would plug it in and pump it for a couple minutes and then I would unplug it and then use my tire gauge to see what the reading was and plug it back in. And so anyway, this one is really awesome in that you you hook it up to your tire and then it'll show you what pressure you're at and then you'll set the pressure to whatever you want it to be and then turn it on and then it automatically um, stops when it reaches that pressure which is just really convenient. I run my tires um, three to five pounds above what's recommended if I'm on the highway just to get better fuel economy. Um, and then when I'm out, like I don't know if you can see here, I'm actually out on some gorgeous BLM land out in Colorado. And I don't know if you can see, that's actually the road <laughs> that I use to get up here. Um, so I actually had to deflate my tires a little bit to get up here. So anyway, it'll be really convenient when I do leave this camping spot that I can just go ahead and set it back to what I want it to be for when I'm, you know, back on the road. And I just set it and it'll fill and then just turn off um, once it reaches that point. So anyway, one of my favorite things also I think has, I don't think it'll turn on while it's not plugged in, but it has a, a light as well. Next, I have my little emergency battery packs. I've had these forever. They're probably much better ones um, available right now. But anyway, they're USB rechargeable. And then I can use them to recharge my phone. Um, a lot of the stuff that I have here in the car, I have a fan, I have um, a water faucet. A lot of things are USB rechargeable. So I, I always keep these fully charged. And I have my little outlet here that I use to keep those charged. Um, next, well, I, I keep this actually with me while I'm sleeping, especially if I'm stealth camping, so I can hit this. 
um, in case um, I just want to set off my own car alarm um, to draw attention if I feel like someone's around around me or if I just feel like I'm in danger. Um, I also have an aftermarket Viper um, alarm system installed as well. This is just an, um, what are they called, an air tag. I mostly use this just to find my car after um, I've parked it somewhere, but also like if I'm camp, I mean, if I'm hiking, um, I can use it to find, you know, to find where I parked um, at the trailhead. Um, next, I have my little mini jump starter. This is also USB rechargeable. And I got it so I could jump start um, my Prius without, um, you know, without another vehicle. I was carrying just regular jump start cables. Um, but now I have this, so I don't need anyone else if, um, if I ever do need to jump start my car. And then also there's, I think, some mixed data, mixed opinions about whether or not you should use your own Prius to jumpstart another car. So I actually used this, um, or let someone use it a couple weeks ago. I was out hiking and, um, a guy had left his light on in his car and came back after his hike. And of course the car was dead and he needed a jumpstart and he was just kind of waiting at the trailhead for someone <laughs> to come with, um, with a jumpstarter because there was no signal where we were. So, um, so anyway, it was nice to have that and be able to help and not worry about damaging my own car. Um, so yeah, really nice. And it was super easy to use. Um, I believe it gets two jumps to each charge, but I went ahead and recharged it after, um, after using it a couple weeks ago. Um, next we have my smoke alarm slash, um, carbon monoxide detector. I have, um, Velcro on the back of it and I actually keep it over here in my little kitchen area out of the way and it just stays right there along that wall. Uh, next I have my fuel bottle. I actually have stopped using it. I'm keeping it just in case I ever do decide to go out and really just hike for a long, or excuse me, camp for a while. Um, but I keep my tank pretty full. I think when I first started um, camping in the Prius, I really overestimated how much gas I would use overnight and so I had this fear that I would run out and not be able to you know get to a gas station um, um, because of the amount of gas I used overnight so anyway I have been keeping it full I've been filling it and using it up because you know there's a limited amount of time that you can store gas so I would fill it and then you know, pour it into my car every month or so and then refill it um, this past time I just didn't refill it there's also some some safety concerns with, you know, keeping gas in the car as well. So anyway, I don't know that I'll, I'll use it. I'm definitely not keeping it full just all the time now, but keeping it for right now, um, in case I do decide to use it at some point. Um, next I have my fire extinguisher. I keep it, um, on the side of my toilet, which I'm actually sitting on. Um, the toilet's closed, um, for this video. Um, that way I can get to it easily if I need to. Um, next I have, oh, there's a glare here, but I have, um, a lot of bungee cords. I have, um, some zip ties here as well. And then some ratchet tie downs, which I mean, actually, I don't think I've used it all for the Prius. I had that back when I was, um, when I had my Tacoma and my travel trailer. So I may actually get rid of those. I can't, can't really imagine a need that I would have um, for them in the Prius. But anyway, I still have them for now. I do use the bungees and the zip ties like crazy. I don't know if you can tell here. I use them to hold things in place. I also have brackets. Um, I have the zip tie there. I have bungees. Um, I don't like anything shifting around while I'm driving. Um, just, I, just because I don't want anything distracting me. But then also if I were to need to slam on brakes or if I were in an accident, I don't want anything flying. So, um, I'm camped right now. So everything's not secure like it usually is, but, um, while I'm on the road, everything is secured. So I always have these and I'm always finding extra uses for them, um, here. But like I said, the ratchet tie downs, I don't, don't think I'll, I'll end up using. So I may get rid of those as well. Next I have this, this is something I've had for years and years. I have this odd fear that I will get stuck on railroad tracks and that my seatbelt will lock and I will just get run over by a train. 
Um, so anyway, this will save me in case my worst nightmare ever comes true. Um, and if you can see here, it's got a little cutter that's to cut the seatbelt, and then this is to break the window so I can get out. Um, I used to have that on my Hinge dating profile some, for some reason, that that was my deep, dark fear. Someone told me that was like a scene from a movie. I don't think I ever saw the movie, but for some reason, that's a fear of mine. So I've had this forever, and it just stays um, right beside the driver's seat up front with me. Um, next, I have my tools. Um, most of this is really for the, the little adjustments and changes that I'm still making to the bed and toilet platform and just changes in general. I have a drill, I have um, this little multi-tool with an axe and just some general random things. I've got a hammer in there. This is really probably all I need just for car safety. Um, but for now, while I'm still messing with things, um, I'm keeping just some basic tools. And then also, if I ever need to, um, to take the bed platform out in case I, I don't know if a mechanic would ever need need it removed um to access anything if i were ever to need to get any work done to the car but anyway i have everything that i need um just to take the bed platform out completely if i need to and i built it in a way that it would be fairly quick and fairly easy to take it out um if i ever need to um next Moving along here, this is some of my um, personal um, defense equipment here. I have a taser. This usually stays in my handbag that I keep with me, but I also keep it um, within reach when I'm camping. It has a little flashlight. It's rechargeable, um, just a regular outlet. I've had it for many years, too. Um, never had to use it, fortunately, um, but it's lasted a long time. These three I keep in my hiking bag. I just have some pepper spray here. This is a personal, um, it's a rescue link. It's a GPS um, SOS device. So if I'm ever in an area that doesn't have any cell phone signal at all, um, it'll send um, an SOS out. So can't text or anything like that. It's pretty much like sending a 911 message out. Um, but you register it with the government. It was expensive, um, but I wanted something that I didn't have to pay a monthly fee on. That I could just pay pretty much up front. Um, because hopefully I won't ever have to use it, um, but it does give me some peace of mind since I do spend a lot of time camping um, and hiking where there's little to no cell phone coverage at all. Um, next, I have my phone. I have um, just an old cell phone that I keep completely charged and I keep it in my um, backpack with me. I used to drop my phone in the water a lot and so I started carrying this many years ago in case I drop my phone in the water for whatever reason my regular phone doesn't work. I have this phone. I don't have any service that I carry on it but if I need to, to dial 911 it will work for that. Um, and actually while I'm thinking about it too um, another thing that would be helpful um, is to join the Facebook. I hate social media, but um, I have found a lot of useful information on the Prius um, Facebook groups. There are some, you know, there are for modifications specifically for Priuses. There are Prius camping groups, things like that. I've learned a ton of information from that. Um, and I think it's good to be part of those groups in case you ever do have an emergency. I haven't had um, really an emergency, I would say, Prius camping, but back when I was living in a travel trailer, I did um, have a couple just really urgent issues, and it was really great to be able to just get onto Facebook and, you know, present my question to tons of people that were already experts on the subject that were able to respond very quickly um, instead of just, you know, trying to Google search um, for what I needed. So anyway, um, if you haven't looked into that, even if you hate social media like I do, <laughs> it's probably worth um, taking a look. Um, next, moving this way, that's really the last of it. I have um, my emergency kit back here that has band-aids. I always keep glue. <laughs> I use flex glue and Gorilla Glue um, for different little repairs. I had an issue with my um, rear view mirror. I used it for that, as well as electric tape and duct tape. Um, I believe that that's it. Let me know what you think. If you think I've left out anything or need to add anything to my own collection here, 